Hey folks, what's going on? This is Shadow Stars coming at you folks with another video. Um, today's um, video is um, going to be based on a subscriber's request. Um, he requested that, hey, I look more into Morant's Rants' videos. And what I'm doing today is, yeah, I'm going to be covering another Morant's Rants video. Um, this is his most recent video in regards to AMC. Um, and let me clarify, if you're brand new to the channel, uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hope you watched through the end. Um, what I do, what I do with this channel is that I like to be rational, logical, and think critically. I like to let the facts and the data dictate um, the results. I'll look at the data, analyze it, and then I'll give you my opinion on it. I don't go off of any tinfoil hat theories. I don't go anything based off stuff that can't be backed up by evidence with reputable sources. And when people call out mis call out infactual stuff, misinform they spread misinformation, they grift, etc. I call them out on it. So I know Brian's rants. He covers a lot of GameStop, covers a lot of AMC. Um, as far as I know, he's usually pretty good with um, calling things out properly in regards to AMC. Um, but I know that no one's infallible. People make mistakes. So. Let's see, um, what does this video cover and are there any issues on, uh, on this video? Uh, I covered one of his videos before and I n noted a couple of mistakes in it. So without further ado, uh, let's get going. 65 to 70% range and you size the positions that you have the highest conviction in because they will outweigh the ones that are wrong. And that's how we look at it. We know we're not going to be right all the time, but that gets into if you're wrong, you need to be able to cut and that's critical. Whatever the size position is, you got to be able to move on and get to the next investment. But so what he's saying is that dependent on the size of the position gives you the conviction of being in it. Certainly for Antera, who is a short distressed credit fund, okay? They all they do is short sell. That's what they're known for. That's what they do. That's, what, that's how this guy makes his money. But I want to remind you that he has been in AMC, guys, since 2021, the start of it. I even have, actually, 2020. I even have a filing from them for 2020. In December, he was still in it. He has been in AMC. Okay, so I want to verify that statement that, hey, they've been in it since 2020. Um, and he says that they've been in AMC for 10 quarters, according to the 13 Fs that I have. So what I did was, hey, here, Antera Capital. On the SEC Edgar website, all, the, all this information here, searching for their 13F filings. So what we have here is the beginning of 2020. Um, and let's look through their 13F filing. AMC. I failed to see AMC in here. So now we're going to look at their June filing. Okay, so starting from June, they have some options here. They got some calls, they got some puts, okay. From then on, they did an amendment to this filing. Oh, they do an amendment about their till rate positions, okay. So we don't really need to have that up. Let's see their November filing. Yep, they have some shares, they got some puts. We got the last filing for 2020. No AMC. So they're in and out of their positions. So if we start off here, this is the beginning of 2020, their March filing. They had no position. Um, and remember, this is just as of that date. So they could have had a position anytime in between that period of reporting. But on that final date of the 31st, they didn't have it. And right here, this is when, what, their June filing. So yeah, as of that June date, they had some position. This is their September filing. They had a position. And the end of the year, 2020, no, they didn't. So going into 2021, did they have a position? No, they didn't. June 2021. Did they have a position? Nope. This was this an amendment? Yes, it was amendment to their March filing. Nope, I don't see AMC in here. Uh, their September filing of 2021. Mm, nope, no AMC. And their final filing for 2021, AMC, no. 
And then first filing of 2022. AMC, yes they do. Oops. AMC, once again, they have a call and put position. Significantly more call, um, puts than calls. Let's see, their June position. Nope, I don't, oops. I do not see AMC. <clears throat> their September position, AMC. Nope. And that's their most re um, recent filing. So they've been in AMC for 10 quarters. Hmm. So what, what do we go through? We went all the way from their first filing in 2020, right? I have the filing here. They didn't have a position. So how many filings is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 filings, right? <clears throat> and out of those filings, how many did they have AMC in? Not all of them. We already said this filing, first of 2020, they didn't have it. They did for second, third, nope, not for, this is what? The fourth, nope, not for the first, not for the second, not for the third, Not here again. I'm pulling up these files, filings ex exactly from the SEC Edgar website. So they've been in for 10 quarters. Over what time frame is he talking about? Um, and once again, I'll make the point that, hey, they could have been in and out of their positions within that quarter too. We don't know unless they specifically separately disclosed that, hey, we've been in it. We won't know. According to just the filings, no. So what Rants Rants is saying about this, um, mm, need more context, need more clarification. But just based on, hey, they've been in for 10 quarters, too broad, too vague, vague um, no, I don't accept that. So let me go back and let's listen to that little clip. Guys, since 2021, it. the start of it. I even have, actually 2020, I even have a filing from them for 2020. In December, he was still in it. He has been in a so is he correct about the December filing? 2020 December filing? No, they did not have a position. So that is incorrect. Sorry, Marantz. MC for three years. And he has now in turn, not only shorted the stock all the way down to the ground, went long on the other side of it, up to 22% of their company, of AMC the company, but how much of his assets under management is he willing to risk on this trade? You're about to find out. But I'm a true believer that it's all about position sizing. And now that we talk about assets under management, that's something I want to take a quick look at. So let's see. When they first filed in 2020, in March, they had, what, 616 million? As of their most recent filing, what's their value here? Significantly greater. Now, I don't take this whole... Um, table value. I don't take this um, too seriously. Um, you'll definitely see fluctuations as obviously firms can make money and lose money. But also, I mean, all comes down to a, hey, are they willing to deploy more capital? I mean, all these firms, they have their own trading strategies, their own type of um, guidelines of when to deploy their capital, when not to, when they're going to return money, back, um, give money back to like dividends and stuff or perks back to the folks who have invested into their company and, st and for those who manage their money. Um, so nonetheless, I'm not going to pay too much val um, to this. What I will check though is, hey, 2021, what was their value? So all in all, um, just spot checking here and there it looks like the value has been greatly going up every quarter it looks like yeah 3.2 3.7 so definitely growing looks like just based on strictly the value of their investments here that's increasing but without looking at their actual balance sheet of how the company is run we don't know 
clear all. Let's see, all transactions. Yeah, and we don't have any specific filing as to um, what their financials look like. And getting that correct, and that's how you generate alpha. So that's an interesting segue to sort of how we got to know each other as a firm, which I think is interesting and we're talking about a little bit. The big driver of our conviction in investing with you was following individual trades with you. It wasn't just that the trade was right. One of the things I saw there was the trade construction was a really important part of what you do. You want to talk about how you think about structuring those? Yeah, I think it actually comes from, let's talk a little bit about the background and how you get to that point. I feel like I almost had two careers prior to uh, launching Antara. I worked at Perry, which was very fundamental in training. And then I worked at Man Group, where it was a lot more rigorous in terms of risk and risk management and structuring. And that's where I think when you combine the two of those, it can be very powerful in terms of generating returns and alpha. So for me, structuring is one of the most important things about what we do at Antara. And the reason is, Everybody can look at the same information. Everybody can look at the same trade. It could be a spin. It could be a takeout. But what we've done very well is take the same information about an investment and really generate outsized returns and mitigate downside. So the way we think about it is when you look at a company, the first thing most people do is example is a spin on a stock. You go long one, short the other. That's it. We take it to the next step and we say, okay, well, do we why don't we look at the vol? Why don't we look at the options, look at the options markets, let's look at other parts of the cap structure. So we spend a lot of time thinking about how we can and this gets back to the sizing point. We don't want to just put a trade on to have a one, two percent position. We'd rather size it to have a more meaningful impact, but you need to structure downside protection and have that hopefully asymmetric upside as well. So that so what that describes, just so you guys are aware, he's painting out the picture of how they structure their position as in how they hedge their position. Most people could just hedge, i.e. you go long, we go short, or you go short, we go long, just to hedge it, just so that it doesn't run away from you. So you don't get caught with your pants down, like some of these other hedge funds did in 2019, 2020, 2021, whatever it may be. So for AMC, and I've said this from the start, guys like this have been in it for three years. They are not over leveraged. They're extremely intelligent, and I believe Adam Aaron is outmatched. That's the issue here. You remember, there's guys like this that are versus Adam Aaron. And when they walk into that room, they give them the sweetheart deal that he thinks he's getting. When a guy like this is painting the picture for you, they're not gonna risk their whole company with the idea that there's a short squeeze coming. No. They know how to mitigate that risk. And how do they do it? Well, Okay, um, so far what he says, um, most definitely. I mean, the folks that are running these firms that have, the folks running these hedge funds, I mean, they've got millions, tens, hundreds of millions, I mean, billions. I mean, it's a crazy amount of money. So obviously, they're not dumb. I mean, a lot of the folks that are working for these firms, I mean, the analysts, the traders, and so forth, I mean, these are well-educated folks with, more than just your bachelor's degree, usually some sort of master's. They might have people that they're consulting with that have PhDs. I mean, they're smart folks. They know what they're doing. That doesn't mean that they're always correct because you'll look at, hey, people that they are constantly training, no one has a 100% win record. There will always, there'll always be times where they're, there'll be times that they're wrong. No one is 100% correct. You're, you're human. Something that you didn't account for, something you didn't calculate, something you didn't expect, some event you never expected, can happen. So that's when you can be wrong. But nonetheless, I mean, yeah, a lot of folks, they're not doing just one side of a trade. They're looking at both upside, downside, yeah, and they're always doing risk mitigation. More successful firms will be able to take on more risk, but know that, hey, how do I protect myself? They do those probability calculations and all that. Um, to assume that, hey, um, Adam Aaron is outmatched, um, that's his speculation. I can't say I, I, um, I would agree with it. But on the flip side, I can't say Rant is completely wrong either. Um, either way, I mean, you'd hope that, hey, when you're running a company, um, when you're looking to make a deal like this, you're doing your due diligence. You're looking at, hey, who's if they want to invest in your company, you want to you want to understand, hey, why are they doing this? What do they offer us? I mean, you're doing your due diligence. You're looking into it. You're researching it. Now, could the people that um, on Terra Capital, Himanshu Gulati, could this guy be hiring smarter folks, more educated people with more experience? than um, the people that AMC is um, hiring and contracting and whatnot. That's certainly possible. Flip side, does AMC have connections? Does Adam Aaron have connections? That could be possible. Nonetheless, that's just this is pure speculation. The one thing that um, I think that should be covered is perhaps, rather than being outmaneuvered, this was the only deal that was available. That's the stance that I would more think about. When you have no deal at the table besides this one, what do you choose to do? When your company is burning millions of millions of dollars every quarter, you got massive cash burn, you see the big pile mountain load of debt that you have and the pay, the interest payments that you, you need to make, you don't have positive cash flow. So 
you're waiting for the box off the movie industry to recover from the down um the down period due to covid you need to buy time and if no one else is offering you a deal but hey this one group this one place is offering you a deal and they're the only lifeline you can grab onto hey maybe it's a bad deal you're selling a large portion of your company away to them but hey if that allows you to survive that's the deal you got to take as opposed to hey if you get no infusion of capital you might declare bankruptcy you might just go down much sooner than later so you're buying time in hopes it's almost like a hail mary you're thinking that hey things aren't looking good we need more money to survive we need we need some extra time you're praying that hey some sort of hail mary will come through that's the stance i would like, i would take oh, we'll go in here this part out that's a big part of what we do and i think a differentiating factor more legs onto a trade there are more things that can go wrong even if you're original in wrong and that's how we even from structuring on an equity position we'll buy puts against that and it also 10 years and it's a big part of what we do the way we think about it is you really showed you the, the transactions of it i showed you how they had it. you guys don't remember it was here um i'll show it to you on the screen really quick and see if it's ready to go well, that's his ugly face um let's go here you know no edits no cuts i'm, I'm busy man hey how you doing ugly guy so this is entera and we look at entera actually had the 13f filings ready to go these guys have committed themselves and i'm moving you out of the screen way over here um and i'll show you right here so it's going to show you their average position the time held is going to be two points yeah, so it looks like he's using whale wisdom. Um, personally, I don't like using any of these websites. Um, sure, it a lot of these sites are able to display this information, but a lot of the times these free websites they don't do the proper research. They don't always be. They're not always checking through all the filings. I mean, it's. I'm guessing it's all. A lot of them are just computerized to the point where hey, you get these filings. You get these um, fields, combine them, display it all together, yada, yada, yada. And that's where a lot of mistakes are often seen. So I'll be, I'll make a generalization that I don't like sites like this, Fintel, Whale Wisdom, Holdings, etc. I don't like those sites. And I'd prefer to just, hey, it takes more time, but guess what? I want to get the direct source of data. So I'll go through. I'll pull up all the 13F filings from the SEC Edgar website. But hey, busy guy, I don't blame you that you'd like to use um, a site that'll give you the information quicker. And we all got stuff to do. But for me, hey, I'd like to be more confident in what I'm saying. In six quarters, they turn and burn faster than ever. They don't hold things long. They hold it almost three quarters on average. They have been holding AMC for 14 quarters. Like they literally know this company's going nowhere. And they that right there, I'm guessing you're stating that, hey, they've been holding for the past three plus years. But already, I've showed you that, hey, uh, no, I don't think so. At least according to these filings, no, they didn't hold it this quarter. Did they hold it this following quarter? Yes, they did. Those two quarters? Yes. Well, what about this quarter? So from beginning of 2020, they had a position. But hey, ending 2020, did they have a position? No. It's important to be correct with the facts. I understand the general sense of what you're trying to say. That I don't disagree with for the most part. But hey, like we still need to be accurate with what we say. So that's why I'm calling the BS on this one. They are okay with it. This is why they have that long position. To offset the short that they've been doing. Look at Antera. You guys have to see how they've managed their fund over time. The only one that has his fingers in the pot. But you guys can't win this battle. It's not about fundamentals of the business recovering. It's not that. You already, you're already owned by private equity. You're already manhandled by private equity. And I'm just a guy telling you the truth. So listen again. Watch it again. Maybe he has his fingers in the pot. But you guys... Hold They're on. now long. This one, one, this last section I want to listen to again. Long, 8% of the portfolio is AMC. They took it for pennies on the dollar. This guy is smarter than you can imagine. And if you guys really pay attention. To 8%. Is that correct? As of what? Quarter three? Their total value, sorry. Total value was what? Million. 3.7 billion. 3.7 billion and. Where's your 8% calculation coming from? Hold on, he's using 13F metrics, right? Yeah, it's right there, 13.7 or 3.7 billion. I don't understand, where's this 8% coming from? 
for what's happening out here, you're about to lose to guys like this. And he's not the only one that has his fingers in the pot. But you guys can't win this battle. It's not about fundamentals of the business recovering. It's not that. You're already, you're already owned by private equity. You're already manhandled by private equity. And I'm just a guy telling you the truth. So, listen. That I don't quite understand. Well, I don't, I don't understand the, the, the thesis here. So you're saying that because it's owned by private equity, what do you mean you can't win? From my perspective, I don't believe um, the whole scenario of the short squeeze is going to happen. If you're, if you're coming from that standpoint, then I'll, I'll agree that, hey, it's unlikely that um, it would occur. But fundamentally, what's wrong with having um, private equity, this type of firm, having a big stake in your company? What's wrong with that? If you're able to turn around your business, what's wrong with that? I'll, I'll agree that, hey, it seems unlikely they'll be able to turn around their business model. But there's nothing wrong with them owning a portion of your company. I, I don't understand this, this point that he's trying to make. Listen again, watch it again, maybe you guys understand it again. But these guys are winning, and there's no beating them. I'm sorry, you're not going to beat them with AMC. You're just not. There's nothing to beat. If you invest in a company, you buy them when the market values them, at an under, if it's undervalued, and if the market later on turns around, values them higher. If you bought in low and you sell high, you've, you've made profit. You've won. So I don't understand this point. Um, if he's talking about, hey, um, you're going to squeeze, you're going to give it to the hedge funds, that point I'll agree. Um, it's very unlikely that, hey, you'll be able to beat out these firms. Like, they have billions of dollars, millions and billions of dollars of funds that they're managing, that they're investing. And for you, for you to show them massive losses, that seems very unlikely as a simple retail trader. Unless you have a lot of capital, unless you know uh, you have a large group of people with a large sum of money that you can trade with. But uh, yeah, that's just going to be my um, video on Morant's rants. This um, his most recent video. Um, he has some mistakes that he um, misinformation that he talks about. Um, the overall sense of it, um, the overall tone of it, I'll agree. Um, but yeah, you still need to be accurate with the stuff that you're, you're, you're talking about. So I might start doing like little grades, um, kind of give a grade of, Hey, what's this person um, saying? Are they correct? Are they wrong? Um, kind of just do like a regular, let's say school grading a through a through D what was this performance? Um, maybe I'll do a little criteria, do a little rubric of a, Hey, what I deem, what you need to do to do a a great video in terms of the information that you're stating. Um, are your are your are your statements fa um, based on facts? Are they supported? Do you show your sources? Um, does the reasoning is there logic behind it? Does it make sense? Stuff like that. Maybe I'll do that in, um, in future videos. I got a couple other things that I'm brainstorming of stuff that I'll do in my videos. Um, I was talking on a live stream. Um, I think what two days ago. Uh, I was talking about hey, I want to do a a little buzzer thing um, with a bullshit counter. Um, kind of like, um, there's a YouTube channel I used to watch called Cinema Sins, and they used to do, hey, if there's an issue with something in the in the movie, then hey, they do it like a bullshit counter, and they ding it. So similar to that, I kind of got that idea off of that. Um, I kind of want to do a bullshit counter for people who make videos. Um, not just on AMC, I mean, because I'm eventually going to be um, branching out into other stuff, but for now, I mean, this is something that I know well about, something that I've researched and spent a lot of time with and stuff that I've been um, it's something that I've been calling bullshit on, on a lot of people grifting off the movement um, I don't I wouldn't really classify Morantz as a grifter um, he calls out on a lot of the um, same stuff that I would do but I think he embellishes stuff a little bit more um, he has certainly a lot more negative connotation a lot more negative tone and the information that he um, spreads, the overall gist of it is correct, but there's definitely details that he gets wrong. Um, and I wish he would correct that. So my video, if I do a off the fly grading, I'd say, hey, I'll give you a B, B minus. Most of the stuff, hey, relevant, 
but you do have some points that are not correct. And that's probably where I'm going to edit. Actually, you know what? Um, should I do one other thing? Hold on. Let me, let me pull up box office figures here for you folks. Give you a quick update in what's going on. So box office mojo. Looking like, ooh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Looking like some pretty strong days. Um, so it looks like this first weekend wasn't too bad. Um, if I pull up the my spreadsheet here. I did the update for the month. They're at 214 mil. Um, so they're more than halfway of what um, it was for January 2022. 55% versus Q1 January of 2022. And we're just one week in. So that's definitely good news. Um, but once again, remember that, hey, the, the, more, the most important part is really They're, they're margins, they're profit margins. Yeah, sure, you have this admission revenue, but of that, how much is actual profit? How much of their profit is the total domestic gross? That's something important to understand. Right now, they're definitely on the right trend. Looks like they needed to average about 14 to 12, anywhere from 12 to 14 uh, million a day. Um, they're well on their way so far. We'll just have to see what the other releases do. Um, looks like Megan had a strong, um, strong first day. It, I mean, it beat Avatar for that for that first day on Friday. But we'll just have to see how it continues to hold. See how costs um, impact the theaters. Because remember, look at your profit margins. Where do your where do you, where does your profit come? Where does it come from? Sure, your revenue is significantly higher for your ticket sales, but hey, that's not all your that's not all profit. There's significant costs associated with that. It's your concession stands. So you need a lot of foot traffic. You need a lot of people coming in spending more. So your average um dollar spent per patron, that's an important figure to look at. What percentage of patrons coming in are spending food, um, spending money at the concession stands? How many people are buying sodas, popcorn, candy, etc.? That's the stuff you need to pay attention to. So far, attendance has not been very good. Uh, uh, do I have it here? Your attendance is far below pre-pandemic levels. We'll have to see. Will that eventually recover? Because we'll see, pre-pandemic 2018, 2019, you had attendance in the 90 million range. Around there, 80 to 90 million, a quarter. That's for the year, but hey. But look, you're at 40 to 60 mil. You're still way below. So yep, um, I'll end the video here. Um, I'm going to try to keep all my videos under 30 minutes. Um, eventually, I try to keep it down, try to keep it around that 15 to 20 minute range. Something I'm going to continue to push myself and work through. Um, but hey, if you like if you like the video, um, please hit the like. Um, got any questions, comments, concerns, stuff that you want me to rebut, to fact check me, feel free. I'd love it. Leave them down below in the comments section below. You got stuff that you want me to cover. Leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to cover them in um, future videos. And hey, I'd love it if you guys could share this video with folks. Share it with folks you think that need to see this information. Share it with folks that you think that'll like it. Help push out the right information. Help fact check folk, th folks. Ah, sorry. Help fact check folks who are spreading misinformation. I don't care what sort of stance that you have. Bullish, bearish, neutral, whatever. If you're whatever stance that you have, make sure that, hey, you have the evidence behind it because I'm coming from it, a logical, reasonable, thinking critically um, point of view. If I see data that proves me wrong from a reputable source, I got no problem admitting I'm wrong. That's what the data says. I follow what the data shows me. And I think that's what should occur for everyone else. Don't go following some unprovable 
unreliable source of information. Go off of stuff that, hey, you can access something that you can verify yourself, something that makes sense. You see the reasoning behind it. You see the logic behind it. But that's going to be it, folks. Hope everyone has a great Sunday, and I'll see you folks in the next video. Shadow Stars out. Peace.